A vast sunburnt continent stretches before you, dry, brittle, and thirsty. This is Australia, a place where droughts aren't rare, they're relentless. So what do you do when the sky stops raining? What if the answer lies over 6,000 kilometers away? Australia once planned to tow a 25 million ton iceberg across the ocean just to get a drink of water. Sounds unbelievable, right? But during the 1970s and 80s, Australian scientists seriously explored dragging Antarctic icebergs over 6,000 kilometers to supply water to drought-hit cities like Perth. Why? Because Antarctica holds 60% of the planet's fresh water. And every year, thousands of icebergs melt into the sea wasted. Some experts believe that one iceberg could hold enough water for millions. They held conferences, built models, ran cost estimates. One proposal even suggested wrapping an iceberg in a giant floating bag and hauling it with tugboats. The tech was real, the need was desperate, and the idea nearly became reality. So what stopped it? And could this frozen dream actually work in today's climate crisis? Let's dive into one of the most extreme water solutions ever imagined. Australia is dry, really dry. In fact, it's the driest inhabited continent on Earth, and most of the rain it does get falls in all the wrong places. Just look at Perth. Home to over 2 million people, it's one of the most isolated cities on the planet. And when it comes to water, Perth has always been in a tough spot. The city leans heavily on underground aquifers and reservoirs, but now those sources are running low and rivers are turning salty. Even with two desalination plants, it's often not enough. And desalination isn't cheap. It guzzles energy and comes with a massive price tag. Australia has always battled drought, but some hit harder than others. The millennium drought from 1996 to 2010 was one of the worst. Panic spread, water restrictions ramped up, and suddenly an old warning from 1973 felt very real, that Perth could run out of water by the 21st century. So the question was, what now? How do you keep a city alive when the taps might run dry? That's when some started thinking way outside the box. One of those wild ideas? Tow an iceberg across the ocean. Sounds insane, right? But the idea didn't start in Australia. It came from sunny California. In 1949, oceanographer John Isaacs floated a bold question. What if icebergs could solve water shortages? By 1956, he proposed using a 3 million ton tugboat to haul one from Antarctica or Alaska to the US. Others took notice. In 1977, a Saudi prince even backed a plan to tow icebergs to Mecca. A major scientific conference in Iowa followed, but the conclusion was grim. The ice would melt before arriving. But Australia had one advantage. It's closer to Antarctica. During a 1965 drought, an American firm offered to bring an iceberg to Australia. The offer was declined, but interest grew. By the 1970s, Perth's worsening water crisis led scientists to revisit the idea, this time seriously. Yet, after attending that same Iowa conference, they returned with more questions than answers. Bringing an iceberg to Australia sounds simple in theory, but in reality, it's a monster of a task. Engineers broke the whole mission into three main steps, picking the right iceberg, towing it safely across the ocean, and turning that ice into usable water. Sounds easy when you say it fast, but each step comes with massive challenges. Let's start with the first step, finding the right iceberg. Not all icebergs are created equal. They come in different shapes and sizes, some round, some jagged, and some perfectly flat. The best ones for towing? They're called tabular. These look like huge frozen tables, flat on top and tall on the sides. Why does this shape matter? Because it's stable. It won't roll over in the middle of the ocean, which could be dangerous for the towing ships. But here's the catch. Not every iceberg is useful. Some are too small. They'd melt long before they ever got close to Australia. Others are too big. So big, in fact, that no ship could ever move them. So what's the perfect size? Engineers say the sweet spot is about 400 meters long, 600 meters wide, and 150 meters deep. That's a floating chunk of ice weighing up to 2 billion tons. To put that in perspective, it's like trying to tow 330 Great Pyramids of Giza across the ocean. So where do these monster ice cubes come from? Most of them break off naturally from the massive ice shelves in Antarctica, places like the Amory or Ross ice shelves. 
These shelves are like icy cliffs, and from time to time, giant pieces crack and fall off into the sea. That's when they become icebergs. But here's where things get tricky. You can't just go and chip one off yourself. That would break the rules of the Antarctic Treaty, a global agreement that protects the continent. It says no one can take resources directly from Antarctic land. So what does that mean for iceberg hunters? It means you have to wait. You can only catch an iceberg after it's already floating out at sea. That's your window. That's when it becomes legal to grab it. But once it's drifting, the clock starts ticking, because the longer it floats, the more it melts. So now comes the next big step. How do you capture and tow a giant iceberg? It's not like you can just toss a rope around it and start pulling. Icebergs are wild. They're massive, unpredictable, and definitely don't play nice. Remember what happened to the Titanic? These floating ice mountains are no joke. To move one, engineers proposed wrapping it in a giant steel net, securing it tightly and using tugboats to haul it. Sounds simple? Not quite. Moving causes heat and friction. The ice melts, the net slips, cracks form. Sometimes the whole iceberg splits, or worse, rolls over. And once it rolls, towing turns into a disaster. So how do you stop that? One answer is something called towing catenary. It is a smart way to figure out how much the tow line should sag so the pull stays smooth. That helps stop the iceberg from flipping. But here's the thing. No matter how smart the plan is, towing takes forever. It can take 6 to 12 months just to reach Australia, and the whole time, the iceberg is melting. Heat, waves, and storms slowly eat it away. And don't forget the weather. Towing is only safe during the Antarctic summer. The rest of the year, huge storms and dark skies make it way too dangerous. So now comes the big question. How do you actually get the water? Once the iceberg reaches the coast, what happens next? If it's still wrapped in a giant bag, the answer is simple. You just squeeze the meltwater out, kind of like toothpaste, and store it in a big tank. It's neat, clean, and pretty safe. But what if the iceberg wasn't wrapped? That's when things get tricky. Some plans suggest parking the iceberg near a dock, anchoring it in place, and then cutting it into smaller chunks with saws, or even blowing it apart with dynamite. Other ideas include building giant lagoons and letting it melt naturally. But there's a problem. What would happen to the ocean if a huge iceberg just sat there for weeks? Could it mess up the local currents? Could it harm sea life nearby? No one really knows. And that's not the only challenge. Once the iceberg melts, how do you move the water to where it's needed? For a city like Perth, that could mean building a long undersea pipeline, at least 15 kilometers. That would cost a lot of money. To avoid all this, some engineers had another idea. Why not wrap the iceberg in a special bag right from the start? Not just to pull it, but to keep the water from leaking out. Believe it or not, someone already tried this. In the 1990s, a Norwegian company tested water bags by towing fresh water from Turkey to Cyprus. So, the idea isn't brand new. But here's the catch. Size matters. So far, no one has made a bag big enough to hold a 2 billion ton iceberg. Making one would mean inventing a whole new kind of material. Strong, bendy, and able to survive for months out at sea. But even if you solved all those problems, there's still one big question left. Who's going to pay for it? A South African study estimated $500 million in five years just to develop iceberg water harvesting tech, plus $1.5 billion in fuel to move one. Meanwhile, Perth's $300 million desalination plant now supplies nearly a fifth of the city's water, making it a far cheaper, proven option. Officials passed on the iceberg plan. Still, despite the costs and challenges, the dream of turning icebergs into floating water tanks hasn't completely melted away. If you thought towing icebergs was wild, wait till you hear about Australia's insane plan to build a massive lake in the outback, another bold solution to the water crisis. Check out that video next. And tell us, could iceberg towing ever work? Let us know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe.